moron! Hey, moron! Duh! <laughs> look at me! I'm the Wooa Waterboard, dude! Cowboys for a bit but you know what I am a person that typically feels like worrying solves nothing worrying solves nothing because what you have to the thing about worrying is typically worrying costs you more emotions you make yourself sick and it doesn't actually fix any problems things are going to be what they're going to be regardless of what you worry about the best thing you can do is come up with a plan try and execute that client plan and if that doesn't work out try something different because as long as you are trying you never fail remember that and i know in my own life i've had times where people will just say you can't do it there's no way you don't have the skill, the knowledge, the money or whatever else. But if you constantly keep working at it, you'll find a way. I am honored, blessed and humbled right now because looking behind me here, we are a little over 500 people away from 100,000 subscribers. When I look at the task of going from one or two subs and just starting the channel and think about the amount of videos and the time and everything else that's gone into growing this and looking at the totality of it. I don't know how I got here. I'll be 100% real. I don't know how I got here other than perseverance. And, you know, you can say a lot of things about the Cowboys. Perseverance, they're trying Maybe not the way we want to see or the way that's splashy. I'm going to say that we have been here before. How many times in the Mike McCarthy era here with the Cowboys have we talked about Mike McCarthy is going to be fired? Every year, pretty much. Every year, you know, and we all go through our emotions and everything else. How many times have we gone through with free agency, you know, we keep hearing all the talking heads are saying, well, the Cowboys have made zero deals. Cowboys are the last team. Well, the reality is the Cowboys, they never make deals. They never make deals. They don't. They just don't. Stephen Jones has this whole thing about, you know, you spend too much money at free agency, you overspend and things like that. And there is some to that. Now, that's not to say that that's the way you're going to win the Super Bowl. But when you think about New England, New England ended up having a lot of players. They would always turn over the roster about 30 or 40%, even when they won the Super Bowl. What they had was a lot of players that may not be all pros or pro bowlers and things like that, but they had a lot of depth in their roster. So when they'd lose somebody, that they'd have somebody that could step in. Now, here's what I know about this team that at least makes me feel good. You can call me a moron, an idiot, laugh at me or whatever. Regardless of what you guys say, Dak Prescott is a really good quarterback. A really good quarterback. And with that, that's the first thing you got to have. If they can get the running game together, see, and this is where, you know, people are going to say, well, Dak just can't elevate. Well, you know what? 
you have to give the man the tools to go through. And you can, I, I, you know, say whatever you want. You, you're free to say whatever you want. But looking around the NFL, when you look at the Eagles and you want to say Jalen Hurts is great, take a look at the running game that they've had when he has been doing well. Take a look at Josh Allen when they played us. When they decided we can't have Josh Allen just throwing up the ball, you know, and figuring we're just going to win that way. They figured out, we need to run the ball to help set up the pass. And he only threw 15 passes to beat us. You must be balanced. You must keep the defense guessing on what you're doing. If you don't, then it's going to make it harder. You're going to have more mistakes. That's the first thing. But when we look at it, we got a tight end who is elevating. This may be, and we'll find out this year, that finally... We have a game-changing tight end since a young Jason Witten, say like in the early, you know, 2014, 2015 type years. And that is key because you look at every one of the good teams out there, Super Bowl winning teams over the last 15 years, they all have something in common, and that's a great tight end. Sometimes a better tight end than they have in receivers. When I look at a C.D. Lamb, C.D. Lamb, you can't argue and say he does not have the talent and the ability and can make plays. So I look at this and say, and even Brandon Cooks will be in this system for a second year, can be a really good wide receiver. And for those out there that said, well, Brandon Cooks, you know, we should have signed Odell. He had 100 yards more than Odell Beckham Jr. did last year for less money. So... The Cowboys did some really good things. Now, I hope they bring back Stephon Gilmore because looking at the other side of the fence, if you can bring back Stephon Gilmore, you've got one of the best secondaries in football. Now, maybe we need to look at another safety and things like that. I mean, there's plenty of them out there that you can go for that may end up being a value add. We got J. Ron Curse, who played pretty good for us for two years, who was a no-name when he got here. But they made him into the player that they needed. You've at least helped your linebacking core. And I know people laugh at, oh, a 32-year-old linebacker. Now your run stop. I didn't say our run stopping was was fixed and that we were done. This is just the first piece to the puzzle. And see, Doc Walker. Doc Walker would always say, have some Doc Walker things that he would say. Like, it's hard to be hungry when your refrigerator's full. Which is true. He would also say, I can, you know, if I lost with you, I can lose without you. And I think that Jerry Jones has finally woken up and realized that stopping the run and being able to run the ball in playoffs is key. Now, I know people will say, well, you should have got Derrick Henry. Yeah, but the thing is, is, you know, in reality, older running backs are older running backs. I know Derrick Henry was playing pretty good last year, but still it was only 4.2 yards carry. Would I like to add Derrick Henry? Yes, I would. But if we we're going to take that money and spend it elsewhere as a run stopper or an offensive lineman and build those things, because ultimately your running game is predicated on the offensive line. It just is. And if your offensive line is opening holes like the Great Wall of Dallas did, an average running back will be able to do great things. So, if we can take care of the offensive line and maybe draft a running back, and as free agency develops, there's going to be other guys, maybe we look at doing some trades. Because here's the thing that's going to be interesting is, as some of the teams have been jettisoning players left and right, you think about a team like Buffalo, which basically is kind of like, you know, uh, we need to kind of start over and do some things differently. They got rid of a lot of contracts and things. They may be, in a month or two or after June 1st, they might be interested in moving a Stefan Diggs and saying, you know what, let's get what we can get. And after June 1st, it's a lessened hit. And maybe, just maybe, you make a move like that. If the Cowboys ended up making a move like that, and get a defensive tackle and go into the draft, this team is really good. Because when you see Washington that's going out there 
and they're signing our old guys, Dante Fowler, Dorrance Armstrong and stuff. You know, they're bringing in Marcus Mariota. The reason why they're bringing in all these guys is because they were shit last year. The cupboard was bare. They got a new coach, and they're trying to get some players to catch up with teams like us. We have a great core. Now, I don't know if the Joneses are smart enough to get the players that Mike Zimmer needs. And if, you know, they're just playing with our emotions, I don't know. I don't know. But I'm not ready to give up because I've seen this before. This is the same old game. The last three years off season have been exactly the same. Let's wait till the season gets here and see which one of these teams that have spent a boatload of money fall on their face. Let's go to Get Up this morning and see what they have to say about us. Friday, it's Get Up. We are live at the Seaport. We are brought to you by Chase. You see the squad. Graziano is here. Bartholomew's got a lot to say. <laughs> Dominique's shoes are just ridiculously awesome. Kendrick Perkins is going to jump in in this hour as well. But let's start a new hour with an NFL free agency stock up and stock, stock down. Stock Dominique, down. give me someone whose stock is up after this week. Oh, yeah, I think Jalen Hurts' stock should be up. He's, he's bringing in, um, uh, or he already has these two great receivers, then they're adding Saquon Barkley, and then a new offensive coordinator. I think a lot of the issues with the offense last season was it was not evolved, and it was not uh, equipped to handle the blitz, which could be some on Jalen and could be some on the coaching staff. So with Kellen Moore coming in, there is uh, aspirations that I think they can fi figure all this stuff out and Jalen Hurts can be back to the player he was when they made that Super Bowl run. Bartholomew, give me someone whose stock is down. Man, Minnesota, what are you doing? You can't sign Justin Jefferson. You talk about losing to Neil Hunter. Sam Donald, the, the Marlboro man, grandson, is your starting quarterback. <laughs> I'm like, what are we doing here, man? Like... <laughs> Kevin O'Connell, former teammate, bro, I feel bad for you, B. Like, stock down. They, they will, you need more? I can keep going. They may very well trade up, uh, you know, and try and get themselves a quarterback. Trade up for where? How much did that Cousins? cost? It uh, could cost a lot. They're uh, sitting uh, at 11. Graziano, give me a team whose stock is up. I think the Houston Texans. I was very curious to see what they would do uh, building off of that great rookie year by C.J. Stroud. Daniil Hunter, a uh, big get for them, an expensive one, but a big get for them uh, on the edge. They, they make the trade for Joe Mixon and give him a contract. I think that'll give them a better running game than they had last year. I, I just like a lot of what Houston mm. is doing in terms of adding pieces around a team that had a rookie quarterback last year and a rookie head coach and still made the second round of the playoffs. All right, and, and then I will sort of speak for a lot of other people when I say stock down on the Cowboys just because it doesn't feel like they've added a lot. They did add a good linebacker in Eric Hendricks, but at the end of the day, I believe they're being completely hamstrung by their pending, looming contract situations including the one with that man, their quarterback, Dak Prescott, that they're in the midst of as we speak. And they got to figure out what they're going to do with C.D. Lamb. they got to figure out what they're going to do with Micah Parsons. In the meantime, they're losing good players, and the teams around them are getting better while they stand still at best. Now, this is coming off of their owner, Jerry Jones, saying that the team was going to be all in for next season. So yesterday, his son, Stephen Jones, expanded on just what exactly that means. I know where the frustration is, the fact that we haven't uh, had success in the playoffs uh, to their satisfaction. Until we do that, you know, the criticism uh, is certainly something that's going to be there. We don't define all in as what you uh, spend in free agency. It's keeping, you know, the core, keeping some of the great players in this league, like Dak Prescott, like uh, C.D. Lamb, like Micah Parsons, like Diggs. Uh, you know, that's what we define as all in. All right, so as, as you pop your collar in his honor, and we all uh, did like the look there, I mean, so, so, so do you buy it? When he yeah. says all in means we're keeping our guys. Yeah, I mean, I don't care what all in means. I think keeping their guys is go. smart. I think what they're doing right now is smart. It's the way that they've been running this organization. The most important thing, like to all the questions that people have about how they're going to fix whatever problems they have, when you have a lot of veteran players or a number of veteran players who are really good and deserve to get paid, where you have to, what you have to do now is find good replacements in the draft. It's not going to be signing high price free agents. Free agents are going to get their value in order to build a successful team and uh, sustain a successful run, which they have. I know yeah. they haven't won a Super Bowl. They've successfully sustained this run in part because 
They seem to have understood that you draft well and you develop well. They're going to do it again because they've been doing it for a while. Since Dak Prescott, they got in the fourth round. They've been doing it time and time again. Let's not forget about Trayvon Diggs, whom they had to pay. They are getting ballers in the draft. So you know when you can draft well, you don't have to overpay for players in free agency. Well, yeah, here's the thing. I get it. And, and, and they've been really good. And Jerry Jones used the term hanging around the rim, which some people didn't like. But I actually think it does make yeah. sense. I mean, you, they, you take your shot enough times, right. maybe eventually you break through. But here is the problem. They, they had the it's window so where they were built around Dak Prescott and Zeke, and they were young and on rookie contracts, and they didn't get anywhere. And now they've had Micah Parsons and C.D. Lamb when they've been young and inexpensive, and they haven't gotten anywhere. So I'm struggling to figure out where they're going to get better. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, I, I get that they're still good, yep. but they feel like a team that did need to make a move or two to get better, and I'm just not sure how they think, do it. And that move can still come, right? Free agency is not a one-week thing. It's uh, you, go. you got the veterans that are going to get cut after June 2nd. It's going to be a pool of, of, of players that's going to come for a one-year deal, prove-it deal. But their core and their nucleus are together. And, you know, locking them up because if you don't pay Michael Parsons this year, what's going to be the price next year? If you don't pay CeeDee Lamb this year, what's going to be the price next year when Justin Jefferson, you know, explodes the salary cap, right? $30 million, maybe something crazy like that. So if playing your these guys question, early is being able to get it done. Your question was the answer, though. You said they had a successful transition. Remember when we were talking about when you pay Dak, you're not going to be able to compete. They paid him and they competed because they drafted well. Yes. And they're going to do it again because that's what they've been able doing. Able to move away from Tyron Smith, who's been a staple for them. Yeah. Drags right out of the program because they drafted well with his replacement. They haven't, he still hasn't signed anywhere either, by the way. He could be back. Like, yeah. that's not out of the question. Look, I mean, they, they are who they are. This is their approach. Jerry Jones can say all in, all in. 75% of what Jerry Jones says is for entertainment value, and we yeah, treat it as go. informational. Right. Like, no, like, he's just talking. So uh, yeah, I, I think right they're going right, to right, right, do what right, they do. Pop, pop, they pop. believe this is the correct way to, mm -hmm. to build right your roster wrongly. and maintain it when you have a good quarterback in his prime, which they believe that they do. So that, that's what's going to happen. And they're going to get back. Trevon Diggs, yeah. right? And they, got, they had a kid, they drafted the uh, linebacker uh, from... I mean, look at what Bland... Over look, Sean, they, yeah. He didn't even play for him last year. They think he's, he's going to... They, they, they develop Bland. So they, they, they've done a good job in developing guys, right? And they don't have to pay him. So they can allow Stephon Gilmore to graduate, the, right? The, the other thing about him saying he's hanging around the rim, I understand why that might rub people the wrong way, but it's in football when it's a single elimination tournament yeah. and it's kind of random, the best thing that you can do is keep taking shots. It's not like basketball where you the best team wins. You, you keep taking shots, you keep getting in there and i understand keep that they've fallen short but the reason Hanging why they have fallen short is not because they haven't built a good enough team right that's the thing you cannot just make your playoff chances better and my like it, you, all you can do is get the, they've won one playoff game the last five years you know how many the eagles have won two Ooh. In the last five years, like, like we, we, ba we base everything on this tiny sample size of games. Like, yes, the Cowboys would love to, to make a move this week that guaranteed them a spot in the Super Bowl. But is there's Mahomes no available? Move. Is Patrick available? No, but, but I mean, you're he's making no, that sit down. If he's, he's not sit down. He's, he's to some degree, you are making that the other point, though, which is to say, not long ago, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers made an aggressive offseason move. They won a Super Bowl. They went for the whole, and, you on. know, at, come on, Green. No, no, no. But, but did they get awful? Is Tom, but, is they Tom went Brady, all in. Is Tom no, Brady no, available? But Matt Stafford, I'm saying you make an all-in move, you trade all these. They didn't just get Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. They got all these other pieces, and we said, well, they're going to be okay. terrible for five years. In the meantime, they won a playoff game this year, and Dallas didn't. The Rams, we said, oh, oh they got rid of all their picks. Oh, they're going to be awful forever. You know what? They were a legitimate playoff team this year, and they could be a... There's a lot to be said for that. And uh, there's also a lot to be said for how the Eagles find ways of getting um, all their players and continue to get other players um, under the salary cap, and the Cowboys don't seem to. But again, how many players have the Eagles had that they look and say, we got to lock this guy up for a long term? So, you know, there's more ways than one to skin the cat. And I hadn't thought about it that way, but in the last five years, the Eagles have won two playoff games, and we've only won one. Hmm. Kind of changes your perception just a little bit there. All right, good people. We are getting closer and closer to 100,000. What I may do once we get to 9, 99,500 is I will just set up a live stream feed uh, just with my secondary camera and just keep it up so we can go through and record it because I don't want to miss it. I have no idea 
when it's going to happen. For all I know, it could be, you know, the middle of the night. And as we start getting closer and closer, um, I do have some work I want to do this morning. I need to go get some wood because you all, you can never have too much wood. But I want to get um, this workbench done down under the house and get this closet cleaned up so I can do some other things there. So as always, we appreciate each and every one of you guys and we will see you soon. Peace.